Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Peachy from your WCA Earth Science class. And today I am going to be going through your next portfolio, the effect of temperature on chemical weathering. Okay, so we're gonna go through a little bit on what to do with this portfolio and where to find the resources that you need to get it complete. Um, as always, when you are doing a portfolio in science, I would refer you to my website. So here is my website here. And you would want to select the Earth Science A tab at the top of the screen. Maybe. Oh, it's on there now. And let's see. Let's make this a little bit smaller so you can... Um, see more information. But as I scroll down, the middle section is on portfolios. And as you can see here, the last one, the effect of chemical weathering, has a template as well as a rubric that goes along with it. And I'm making the recording right now, so that's not quite posted yet. So let's go ahead and just click on um, that template. Because the template is what you are going to use to be able to take in the information that you need. Um, oops, I wanted to zoom out a little bit, my bad. Okay. So you can actually put all your information on this template. This lab is also in your textbook. Okay, so the instructions are in the textbook and what you're gonna turn into me is this completed template. So the first part of the template is your purpose and or hypothesis. In this lab, you will be able to make a hypothesis, which is one something we have not made yet. So what you're going to do is you're going to design a statement that will be an if then because statement. If I do this, then this will happen. And this is why I think so. So an if then because statement. Okay. You will also need a materials and methods section. And this is in your own words. And I have that highlighted on here so you don't forget that. You will need to use your own words, not the words that are found in your book. So I'm just quickly grabbing my textbook here. Oh, that's not the correct one. Here we go. So here's my book, and unfortunately, I know you guys don't have like a, a hard copy of a textbook, but um, this is going to be on pages 150 and 151 of your book. And they do give us some specific directions on which temperatures to use. So I'm going to make sure I keep that handy for myself. So as far as which supplies you will need for this portfolio, um, you'll need some Alka-Seltzer tablets. You could also use some other types of tablets that effervesce. Um, let's see. Ah, here we go. I have some examples here I made for you guys. Okay. So Alka-Seltzer works. You can use um, denture tablets. That's effervent. As well as some people like to use this product the bottom this is airborne and that's used to try to fight off colds so all of them work because they have the same ingredient that will dissolve what's in there probably um the top two are, are a little bit better because they are you know kind of look more like your your limestone which is what you're trying to simulate that it is so what you're trying to see is does temperature have an effect on chemical weathering. And what we're going to be doing is you're going to have um, different samples of water at different temperatures. And you will then measure the temperature at the start of the time it, when it starts dissolving. And then you're going to measure the temperature um, at the end of when it starts dissolving. And then you are going to average those temperatures and you will start a stopwatch and see how long it takes for your tablet to dissolve. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of give you an example here, okay? I'm gonna put this down so you can see this, my table. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. 
So you're going to measure out 200 milliliters of water, and you're also going to need to take the temperature of the water. Now, it is important to have at least one thermometer at home that is good at, you know, taking temperatures um, within the, I don't know, below zero to about a little over 100 degrees Celsius range, kind of from, you know, sub-zero to, to boiling point. So you're going to want to have that set in there for a good couple of minutes in order for the temperature to come to a state of kind of equilibrium, okay? Because the, the red isopropyl alcohol that's in there, it will keep changing for a few, well, it's, you know, in these newer thermometers, it's probably closer to a minute or even less, but you want to get a good temperature. Make sure you record that temperature in Celsius degrees. So right now, this is approximately 26 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much room temperature. <laughs> it's pretty warm in here. So I'm going to take that out of there. Okay. And then you're going to start a stopwatch. And, you know, it works really well. Just use one on your phone if you have a phone. Otherwise, you know, a regular stopwatch would be fine. Or you can um, kind of have somebody work with you. And you can have them time it. That's okay. And you want your Alka-Seltzer tablets. And remember that you're going to start different samples. So you want one that's really, really cold. So I would like you to have one where you add ice to it and let it sit for a while until it's pretty close to zero degrees. And then you're going to have a second one um, that is between 10 and 20 degrees Celsius. A third one that's between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. A fourth one that's between 30 and 40 degrees Celsius. And a fifth one that's between 40 and 50 degrees Celsius. So it gets pretty warm at 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. Because we're using the same type of, of um, antacid tablet for each one, you will, that'll be a constant here. And so when I drop this in, if you've never used Alka-Seltzer before, you wouldn't know this, but it'll start to fizz. So you're going to start the stopwatch when it starts to fizz, and you're going to stop the stopwatch when it stops fizzing. That's going to be the easiest standard to use. Okay. So we're going to watch the bubbles here. And get ready to stop it. Slowing down for sure. It will be bubbly even after you're done. So we want just actively stopping. Okay. And I can look in the bottom. I don't see any more chunks left. But the bubbles aren't going to go away because you just carbonated this water now. It's like it's like a, like a soda for your belly. <laughs> Alka seltzer is for like ant or for like acid indigestion or whatever. So. So that is between the 20 and 30 degrees Celsius mark. So in my recorded 45.1 seconds. So then I would record that on my data table, right? So if I go back to the screen here, yep. you can go down. I have a data table already pre-made for you. So we can record our starting temperature in here. You will have to open this, download it either as a Word document or you can open it as a Google Doc. Either one will work fine, okay? And then you should take the temperature again afterwards. I don't expect that to change too much because these things do dissolve fairly quickly. But if you're using like a colder temperature, it might heat up a little bit because it's colder than room temperature. Mine is at room temperature, so it probably won't change too much. It's still 26 degrees. All right. 
So that's pretty much what you do here. And then you'll move on to doing the analyze and conclude questions on page 151. Questions 1 through 7. Just questions on observations. At which temperature did the antacid tablets dissolve most rapidly? And then at which temperature did the antacid tablets dissolve most slowly? What is the relationship between temperature and the rate at which antacid tablets react with water? When we talk about the relationships, we're asking, how does one affect the other? If you increase one, does the other increase? If you increase one, does the other decrease? Those are the types of relationships you want to look at. How fast is that rate changing? Based on your observations, form a hypothesis about the relationship between temperature and the rate of chemical weathering. Remember, this is an if-then because statement. How could you test your hypothesis? This isn't using antacid tablets. We're talking about actual chemical weathering now. So think about outside where you find things that have been weathered chemically, gravestones, um, statues, other types of monuments outdoors that have effects of chemical weathering. What would your results have been if you had ground each tablet into a fine powder? How do you think that would have affected it? You could even try this one and see. Would a limestone building weather more rapidly in Homer, Alaska or in Honolulu, Hawaii? It said there are, they have the same amount of precipitation, but which one do you think would increase chemical weathering? And then number eight you do not have to do because you are in the process of writing your lab report. Okay, everybody, I want to say uh, if you have any additional questions or concerns, feel free to give me a call here at extension 2204. Otherwise, um, you can send me a webmail message and I would be happy to answer them. Good luck on your portfolio.